to bring witness from his spirit. This is Jesus. In a capacity building session, training his disciples on what to expect on the mission field as they go proclaiming the kingdom. So he gave them some marching orders. And I don't have time to read all through the marching orders that he gave. This is the part that interests me. He said, but beware of men. For they will deliver you up to the councils and they will scourge you in their synagogue. That means, when you start preaching for me, if you want to preach in a city, go around, check all the prisons, maximum security prison. Sometimes you are likely to end there. That's what he's telling them. <laughs> check it, check it. They have a convenient bed because it's likely, it's likely, it's likely society will fight you because you still have his voice. You will pay price to be his mouthpiece. You will pay the price. He said, beware of men. For they will deliver you up to the councils and they will scourge you in their synagogues. And ye shall be brought, leave it, and ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. Sometimes, sometimes, bearing witness for Jesus becomes, makes you an object of persecution. So he tells them beforehand, these are the kind of things that are likely to happen. I know there's going to be quiet in this room at this time. Mm. Mm. You will appear before governors. You will stand in their courtroom just because you went for Jesus to proclaim his kingdom. He shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they shall deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak. Why? For it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall be. That's inspiration. Huh? Verse 20. For it is not ye that speak. What is speaking? But the spirit of your father speaking through you. When last did you hear the spirit of our father? Someone tried to preach the sermon he, he concocted that it did not quite succeed. He tried it three times, it didn't work out. Then he allowed the spirit of our father to speak. When last did you hear an express download from the spirit of our father. He said it is not you. Your vocal cord has been borrowed. The thing that you want to say, he said don't take, don't memorize it. He said in that hour there will be a download. And it will not be you that will speak that download. It will be what? The spirit of your father. He shall speak through you. So in the Acts of the Apostles, you will find an unlearned fisherman. Because the move of God was about to be held in a, in a bad light. The tongues they sp speak, some people interpreted it to be new wine. And there was a need for an interpreter to come to the rescue so that the move of God would not be held in the bad light. It was a fisherman. But if you hear his presentation that day, you will know that there's no aspect of fishing that equipped him for that kind of presentation. This man, oh Jesus Christ, oh Lord. Meanwhile, if you have not peeped into heaven, if you have not seen into purpose, if you have not seen into eternity, you cannot make that presentation. I have evidence. Go to the book of Acts chapter 2, verse 36. This is his explanation of the day of Pentecost. It's Acts chapter 2, verse 36. 
if you have not seen into purpose beyond time, if you have not seen into eternity, there is no way you can bear that kind of witness. The man that was speaking was no longer a fisherman. There was a spirit that spoke through him. For all the diverse cultures that came to Jerusalem that day, From among them, 3,000 souls were added to the church. They became permanent church members. Submitted for discipleship. Uh, you know, because you don't think, you don't meditate on scriptures, you don't know that it, is, it has been ages since that thing happened. With all the humanetics and the, the theology, the power, to convict the heart of man is not no longer an inhabitant an inhabitant of the house of god this was his explanation for the day of pentecost he said let all the house of israel know assuredly that god had made that same jesus whom he crucified both lord and christ in the heavenlies if you if you never saw into eternity you will never be able to make that conclusion that he has been dubbed Lord. He has been brought into the office of the Christ as the administrator of the purposes of God. So much so that all judgment must be committed into his hands. The Father will no longer judge. If you ever prayed, and when you prayed, at some point you knew that your prayer was answered. Has it happened to you before? How did you know? It is his office as a Christ that administered, that furnished that reality. It's him. He's the one that made you know. He has an active office that is seated. He, have you ever heard the scripture that said we should come boldly to the throne of grace? Has it occurred to you that grace is administered from a throne, an office? There is no throne like this in the entire universe. This was his conclusion and his explanation for the day of Pentecost. A monarch has been coronated. The fireworks you see in the upper room is an evidence. It's a, telex, it's a telegram that was sent from heaven into the upper room as evidence that he is now installed. That same Jesus that you crucified, you will never have the opportunity to touch him again. He has been exalted as Lord and Christ. Which theological school did this man go to to bring this kind of witness? The moment he finished his presentation, nobody said they were drunk with new wine again. Even those that wanted to paint the move in a bad light did not have an opportunity to find a crack through his presentation to stage their case. The Gensayas were flat because an interpreter under the influence of the Holy Ghost gave all trust to a council he never knew prior to the time of his presentation. It was downloaded on site. When last did the spirit of your father speak? He said, don't take notice, don't take thought of what you say when you are brought before the governors. Oh, for it shall be given unto you in the same hour. For the spirit of your father will speak. There is a prayer I was led to make us pray that you become that instrument that the spirit of your father will speak to. Do you know, yesterday I was praying. I was praying, 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 praying. Then 12 noon, a prophecy came to me about a certain pastor in the United Kingdom. And he came so strong. And I wanted to leave it till evening time before I tell him, no, the Holy Ghost won't let me. So I called him. I called him. Ah, then, you know, he was my pastor long ago. So we were catching up. How are, how are you? I said, excuse me. The reason why I called is not for reconnection. The Lord spoke to me about you. And I began to download the things that 
I received. That was why he was saying, oh, because, the, you know, the light, in thy light, as the, the light of God started coming to him, there were many events he could now understand, many terrible things that happened to him. I was not there. That he could, oh, this, ah, ooh, oh, that was how we were going. In the delivery, in the delivery, in the delivery, until I finished. He said, no wonder. God told me this and this. I did not know the meaning. Do you know how much of a blessing it will be if you can receive the counsel of God for somebody? Meanwhile, according to the scriptures in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, every believer has the ability to receive the counsel of God. Every believer. For the Bible says that we can prophesy one by one. Every believer can prophesy. Can pick from God and can communicate his mind. Every believer. When last did somebody knock at your door? And when you open, he said, don't say the Lord. This and that. You know, it is cast because God is no longer speaking. He's muted in our generation. That was the reason for the strength of the early church. God was a speaking God. Jesus met Saul on the way to Damascus. And when Saul asked him, what will you have me do? Jesus decided not to tell him. He said, go to Damascus. And it will be told you what he must do. Then after three days of blindness, he was praying. He was praying. He didn't know who he, he was just praying. He didn't know how to pray, but he was praying for three days. Ananias now shows up. He said, the Lord Jesus that appeared to you on the way to Damascus, he sent me. Ah, you know the surprise of Saul? So he, he has a vocal cord in Damascus. He's still trying to understand the mystery of the body of Christ. Because Jesus confronted him and said, why are you persecuting me? He said, who are you, Lord? He said, I'm Jesus that you are persecuting. It is hard to kick against the pricks. What will you have me do? Go to Damascus. And it shall be told, told you what you must what do. And then the brother now shows up and said, The Jesus you met on the way to Damascus, he sent me that you might receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. In Ananias, Jesus had a vocal cord. Pray, we were not told the content of the prayer that he prayed for him, but scales fell from his eyes. Jesus didn't need to remove the scales. He said, I have men that have my hands. <laughs> Ooh, I have men that have my voice. Go to them. And they will speak to me. That is how Jesus is crying. When next will he have an opportunity to speak? When next will he have a voice? When next will he have healing hands? So that them that are blind can see. This was the challenge that the Lord Jesus said I should present to you tonight. He also told me that he will heal somebody's eyes this night. It's not an amen matter. I'm, I'm casting news. You don't listen to CNN and say amen. This, I'm telling you what he, if so that I'm telling you so that if it doesn't happen, arrest me. Jesus must speak again. He must speak again. Jesus must, must walk again. Can we pray in a moment? Make me your vocal cord, your mouthpiece, someone that will speak your words and do your work. Someone that will bear witness, bear testimony. Oh my God, oh my God. There is no time greater than this that God needs a vocal cord to speak for him in the nation of America. In the nation of America, we need interpreters. That when there's confusion about the things of God, and many people are about to turn it upside down so that it will be presented in a bad light, then someone comes with, <laughs> with the wisdom of God, an interpreter. Oh my God, I can't hear your cry. I can't hear your cry. I can't hear your cry. 
Uria sima mora habaka. Broske so minde edi akube ma usela bakundo. Romen sile i kubria la tu se mankalia. Paraso mi, baika mi, kaskobe mi. Rusa muke babosa iskobokonde. Ebrisa kedobondaya. 